Hello everyone. Welcome to English lesson. In our lesson today, we are going to write articles. Where do we usually write articles? Yes, we find articles in newspapers and magazines. They are on different topics and different subjects. Sometimes these articles are long descriptions. And I know as students of grade 11, now you are familiar with the structure of the O level paper. They are in test number 16. Sometimes you are asked to write an article. Test number 16 is the question that carries the highest marks. There you are supposed to write 200 words. Don't worry, I'm going to teach you how to write an article today. Before getting started, let's do a small activity. Look at the screen here. I have written a topic there, that is, Sri Lanka, a famous tourist destination. I want you to take a paper and write this topic in the middle of it. What are the words and phrases that come into your mind when you read this topic? You can see there are two keywords, Sri Lanka and tourist destination. I'm sure you get lots of words and phrases and also pictures of wildlife, ancient places, historical sites and so many. So take a few seconds and try to jot down these ideas. Look at this example. These are sample mind maps. You can start like this. Here's small island. Yes, Trincomalee we have there. And then in B, we have beautiful, small country, travel and enjoy. I hope you have completed your mind map. Now I'm going to show you a mind map in the next slide. There I have included some of the words and phrases you might have written in your mind map. Shall you read it? Sri Lanka, a famous tourist destination. Small island or country. Historical places, beautiful, ancient, ruins, beaches, kind or friendly people, Arugambe, hospitable, tourist attractions, elephants, wildlife, wonderful, tasty food, enjoy, travel, endemic birds, Indian Ocean. Now we are going to use some of these phrases and words and write sentences. So I have chosen a few there. Let's use these underlined words and phrases to write complete sentences. I want you to write a simple sentence using some of the words that I have underlined there. Take a few seconds. Let's see some of the sample sentences I have written here. It is a common sentence that we, we can find among the students and it is very simple in structure, isn't it? See the sentence, Sri Lanka is a small island. Or you can also say, Sri Lanka is a small country. So what are the other words or adjectives you can use to replace the word small there? Let's move back onto the mind map. Yes. You can replace the word small there with the word, yes, you can use beautiful and there you can use wonderful as well. See the sentence, Sri Lanka is a beautiful island or you can also say Sri Lanka is a beautiful country. I have used the word wonderful as well. Sri Lanka is a wonderful island or Sri Lanka is a wonderful country. Now I have a question for you. Can't we use these two adjectives, small and beautiful, in one sentence? Of course we can. Take a few seconds and try to write a complete sentence using these two adjectives, small and beautiful. See, I have written two sentences in the slide here. The first one is, Sri Lanka is a small, beautiful country. Sri Lanka is a beautiful, small country. What do you think is the correct one? Do you think they are both correct? No. The correct sentence is the second one. Why? When we describe a noun using more than two adjectives, 
there's an order for us to follow. So what is that order? We usually write or describe the adjectives that we describe opinions first. And then we use or we write the adjectives we describe the facts or the details of the particular noun. Let's take an example. If you describe a city, you can simply express your opinion. A lovely city, a beautiful city, a fantastic city. If you want to describe a food item, you can simply say it's a delicious food. So these are adjectives we can use to describe our opinions. And what are the adjectives we can use to describe facts? That means we are describing the details of the noun. For example, you can describe the size or shape, sometimes color or country, that means uh, origin. And then sometimes you can describe the adjectives and sometimes you can use a uh, material. For example, a ceramic cup or styrofoam cup. Sometimes you can say plastic table. And you can also say Russian story, French drama, or white chocolate, of course. So these are the adjectives we can use to describe facts. So as I told you earlier, when we describe a noun using more than two adjectives, usually we put adjectives that describe opinion first. Opinion goes first and then the adjectives of facts are coming. Here in this sentence, I have written beautiful first and then small. Beautiful is the opinion and small describes the size of the country, the details of the country. Hope that is clear to you. You can also write, Sri Lanka is a wonderful small island. Instead of beautiful, you can use another opinion adjective there, wonderful. Using the same similar structure, we are going to complete this sentence as well. Can you remember the mind map? There, we had a word to describe or complete this gap. Let's move back onto the mind map. Sri Lanka is... So what can you write there? So what is the word or phrase you can use to fill the gap? Yes, you can write Indian Ocean. We'll see. In the Indian Ocean. To make it more beautiful, then I write Sri Lanka is located in the Indian Ocean. Now we are going to write a paragraph using the sentences we described earlier. Right. Remember, our aim is to write an article. So article is full of paragraphs and sentences. We usually write at least five or six paragraphs in an article because you're supposed to write at least 200 words there. So let's use these sentences to write a complete paragraph. So what is the topic there? Sri Lanka, a famous tourist destination. Take a few seconds and try to write a small paragraph using the sentences we have described earlier. I hope you can remember the sentences. Use at least a few of them and write a complete paragraph. You can also use this paragraph as an introductory paragraph in your article. Shall we see a sample paragraph I have written here? Yes. Sri Lanka is a famous tourist destination. It is a beautiful small island. It is in the Indian Ocean. Here I have highlighted pronoun it there. Instead of repeating the word Sri Lanka, I have introduced the pronoun it. I'm sure you can remember the lesson pronoun that we have taught you earlier. Now here, can't we join last two sentences? It's a beautiful small island. It is in the Indian Ocean. Of course we can. It is a beautiful small island in the Indian Ocean. Or you can also say, it is a beautiful small island located in the Indian Ocean, as I told you earlier. Now let's look at another example. Here we are describing Neuralia. Neuralia is a famous tourist destination. It is a wonderful small city. It is in the central province. That is clear to you. Here also we can join the last two sentences and write one. How can you write it? Can you try? Yeah, it is a wonderful small city. 
in the central province or it is a wonderful small city located in the central province. Superb. Now I'm going to introduce you another useful sentence pattern. Of course there's nothing to introduce because you have already used them in several places. You might remember when you were describing pictures and places you use this structure a lot. Now let's move back to our mind map and select or choose some of the words and phrases you can use to write sentences using this structure. Have a look at this mind map again. We have historical places, ruins, tourist attractions over there, elephants, and finally, endemic bird. What do you mean by endemic there? Native to a particular area is called endemic. So you can use them uh, to write sentences using the structure there is or there are. For example, you can say there are a lot of historical places or there are many historical places in Sri Lanka. Just an example. Look at these sample sentences. There are beautiful beaches around the country. There are many tourist attractions in Sri Lanka. There are many interesting historical places in Sri Lanka. There are many elephants in the jungles of the island. There are many interesting species of endemic birds in Sri Lanka. There are ruins of temples, palaces and ancient kingdoms. Hope that is clear to you. And you can use similar structure when you write articles as well. And we have come to the last activity of the mind map. Here I have given you some sentence halves. Let's use some of the words and phrases that were used in the mind map to complete this sentence. The first one is, the people in Sri Lanka are. Can you remember any word or phrase uh, that we found in the mind map to complete this sentence? Let's move back onto the mind map. Have a look at the mind map again. I'm sure now you are very familiar with the words and phrases in this mind map because we have seen it several times. Yes, what are the words or phrases that you can use to describe people in Sri Lanka? Here we have one, kind, friendly people, and another one, hospitable over there. So you, you can join these two and make one. How? Let's see the answer there. The second one, there are a lot of, you can say, ruins and so many words in the mind map. The third one, there are many Again, a similar structure there are. Some of them are. You can give some examples for places. Finally, they like to. Let's see what I have written there. Yes, the first one. The people in Sri Lanka are friendly and hospitable. Of course, we are friendly and hospitable. There are a lot of ruins in different places of the country. If you go to Anuradhapura, there are lots of ruins. Polonnaru, again, you can find a lot of ruins there. There are many tourist attractions in Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka is called a paradise. So it is full of tourist attractions. Some of them are the beaches, wildlife, and historical places. They like to travel to places like Arugambe and enjoy. Here they refer to visitors, tourists, or guests. Now children, so far we have described or written sentences using the words and phrases from the mind map. Now you can use those sentences and paragraphs as the introduction for your article. Now let's move on to the body. Here I have chosen another tourist attraction that is of course wildlife. Sri Lanka is famous for wildlife. Take a few seconds and write some of the ideas you can use to describe wildlife or in your second or third paragraphs. Hope you have written something over there. Let's see what I have written. Yes, wildlife sanctuaries, activities, modes of travel, facilities, endemic birds, elephants. Right. 
Let's take the first topic, wildlife sanctuaries, and organize your ideas in your head. What are we going to write here? Wildlife sanctuaries. To begin with the paragraph, you can use the similar simple sentence structure. There are. There are a lot of wildlife sanctuaries. So there are many wildlife sanctuaries in Sri Lanka. That is a sample sentence. You can write any sentence that you wish related to the topic. I have written there are many wildlife sanctuaries in Sri Lanka. So what we can write then after this? You can name a few. Can you name a few uh, wildlife sanctuaries in Sri Lanka? Yes, we have Yala, Vilpattu, Vasgamu, uh, Kumana, and Habarana as well, Mineria National Park. There are so many. So let's see how I have written some of the examples for wildlife sanctuaries. Yes. Some of the most famous sanctuaries are Yala, Vilpattu, Vasgamu, and Kumbana. So what can we write after that to complete this paragraph? We can write what we can see there if you get. Yes. There are different species of animals and birds in these sanctuaries. It's interesting, isn't it? And I hope that is not difficult for you. Now let's take the second subheading, that is activities. What can you do if you get these wildlife sanctuaries? Yeah. You can go safari, that is most famous, and you can also go hiking, camping, and so many activities. I hope you can remember the words that you learned when you were in grade 10 or 9 about recreational activities. The first lesson in your people's book. Visitors can travel around watching animals. They can go hiking and camping too. Let's move on to the third subheading. That is modes of travel. It is very simple. We are going to write how we can get there. You can use bus, train or maybe your private coach. Let's see. Visitors can travel to these places by buses, private coaches, or by trains. Don't worry, there's only one sentence in the paragraph. It's all right. See the second one. Facilities, very important. What we can write there? We are going to write something. The facilities we get there. You can write just tell me first what you can write there. Yes, you can write accommodation, hotels, and sometimes you get the support of tour guides. Sometimes you go to Polonnaru, they provide you bicycles so that you can ride bicycle uh, to visit the city. See the sample paragraph I have written. There are many facilities for the visitors who visit these places. Again, I have used the same sentence structure. Make sure that you use simple sentence structures so that you can get grammar correct. Second sentence, they can stay in hotels in the sanctuaries. Tour guides help them to travel around the place. They can hire vehicles to travel. These vehicles have special facilities to be safe and watch animals. Whenever you watch animals, your safety is a must actually. Here I have underlined some of the pronoun there. See, in the second sentence, they refer to visitors. In the third sentence, tour guides help them. Them refers to visitors. So you can use pronouns to avoid repetition and make your writing more beautiful. Now we are going to write endemic birds. What you can write there? How are you going to describe endemic birds? Let's use only one sentence. That's enough. Kumana is famous for bird watching. We can find a large number of endemic birds there. 
You can also write about uh, migratory birds if you want. That's up to your wish. Finally, we have the subtopic elephants. Yes, Sri Lanka is famous for Asian elephants. We'll see what I have written there. The best place to watch wild elephants is Vasgavu. There are big herds of elephants in it. I have used the collective noun herd there. The Pinnaval Elephant Orphanage is another interesting place to watch elephants. How can you forget Pinnaval Elephant Orphanage? Yes, if you go there, you can see uh, baby elephants walking in queues, how they are being fed, really interesting. If you want, you can describe them as well. Now we have finished off our article. Here I have taken some sentences from the articles written by the students. In each sentence, there is a mistake. Take the first one. Sri Lanka is popular tourist destination. I am sure you can spot the mistake there. Even I cannot read it in one chunk because of the mistake. We feel something is lacking or missing there. So what is it? Sri Lanka is popular tourist destination. Is the Sri Lanka only tourist destination? No, there are many. So if we write something, or if we describe one noun or something out of many, we can use indefinite article. See the answer. It should be corrected as Sri Lanka is a popular tourist destination. Now let's have a look at the second one. This is an uh, island. <laughs> it's difficult to pronounce even. So what is missing there? The noun starts with the vowel sound. You started learning this when you were in grade 4 5. It's very easy. So it should be this is an island. Let's see the third sentence. Sri Lanka has proud history. Most of the students, when they write about history or proud history, they tend to forget the article. So we can write Sri Lanka has a proud history. Fourth one, it is located in Indian Ocean. See the answer. It is located in the Indian Ocean. When you write an ocean, the Atlantic Ocean, we have to use the definite article the there. See the last sentence in this slide. Most of the tourists comes to Sri Lanka because of the geographical location. Can you spot the mistake in the fifth sentence? Take a few seconds. Yes. I'm sure you know the answer. The mistake is with the verb comes. When you learn simple present, you can remember, if the subject is singular only, we add s to the verb. See the subject here, most of the tourists, so the subject is plural. So we cannot add s to the verb come there. So it should be come, not comes. See the sentence. Most of the tourists come to Sri Lanka because of the geographical location. We have few more sentences. Let's look at them. Yes. Some of the most famous sanctuary are Yala and Kumana. Can you spot the mistake there? See the last part of the sentence? We have the verb are and Yala and Kumana too. It is plural. So what is the mistake over there? Some of the most famous sanctuary. Can we write sanctuary there? No, it should be plural. I'm sure you know the answer. It's easy for you. So the answer should be some of the most famous sanctuaries are Yala and Kumana. Seventh one. There are four religions, Buddhism, Hinduism, Islam and Christianity are it. What is that it? Some students tend to write the sentences like this. It should be, they are Buddhism, Hinduism, Islam and Christianity.
sentence number eight. So what is the mistake in that? Many traditional arts and crafts in there. Is it a sentence? No, it is a chunk. So what is missing there? You cannot find a verb. So we can simply write it as there are many traditional arts and crafts. I have written many sentences using the simple structure there are. See, writing is not that difficult as you think. If you have a few sentence patterns and some vocabulary, you can be on board. See the last sentence over there. The best place to watch wild elephants are Vasgamu. Can you spot the mistake in this sentence? It is apparently correct. No, that's a mistake. What is it? The mistake is with the verb. Can we write are there? Some students think that because of the word elephants, they have to write a plural verb there. No, our focus, the subject of the sentence is the best place. So the best place should be is. Shall we correct the sentence? The best place to watch wild elephants is Vasgamu. See the answer. Right. With that, I have come to the end of our lesson today. We have written articles. Actually, I gave you one article here. So when you write an article, it is very important that you organize your ideas first. There you can use a mind map or any other technique to organize your ideas. Then select or choose simple sentence structures and start writing. It's really easy. Make sure that you take some time to reread the article or passage at the end. And one thing very important, what is it? Make sure that you get grammar correct, spelling correct, punctuation marks and clear handwriting. If you follow these things, you can write a simple, nice, beautiful article. That's it. Goodbye until we meet up again.